what is up? It's your boy Glenn from Diablo Guitars. Today we're going to be uh, hanging out with a 1967 Plexi Panel Marshall Super PA. We're going to hang out with this amp, we're going to play through a little bit, but first I thought it'd be fun to talk about the origin of these amps and the early years of Marshall. So let's get into that. As you know, uh, the first Marshall built was the JTM 45. This happened in 1959. It was a clone, essentially, of Fender's 59 basement amp. It had an ECC 83, basically three of those babies. You had one that was your V1, V2 for your tone stack, and the third one was your phase inverter position. It was tube rectified with a GZ34 rectifier tube. And the first amps actually had 5881 power tubes. They were changed to KT66s shortly thereafter. It was made as a head and a combo. Uh, those combos would become known as the Bluesbreaker combos. It was a JTM45 combo, but Eric Clapton used one on the John Mayall Bluesbreaker album and to great fanfare. It was the Beano Les Paul, the cranked up JTM45, and that was the beginnings of guys figuring out that if you really wound up these marshals, something magic happened with them. There were a lot of cosmetic changes in the early years, and we kind of landed on that classic Marshall look right around 1964 is when things settled into all the Marshalls we kind of think of and recognize today. In 65, the plexiglass faceplates were added. So this began the era of the plexi amps. So from 1965 to 1968, that's your plexi era. Um, you hear that term a lot, Marshall Plexi. That's really what it's referring to. Not necessarily the circuit or the build of the amp, but just the Plexi panel amp. And of course, many guitarists consider these to be the golden years of Marshall. Now, from 65 to 67, that was a really transitional era for Marshall. A lot of changes were made and a series of various models were introduced. We we're no longer just doing the JTM 45, 65 to 67, we saw a lot of changes. One of the first changes was that Marshall went to EL34 tubes. This actually resulted in an increase in power, but it definitely had a sonic effect on the amps, as we all know. Also, in this time frame, uh, the Marshall amps were changed from JTM to JMP. Now, many of the early models didn't have the JMP logos on them at first, the JMP stamped amps usually you start finding right around 1967. The Super PA sitting right beside me is a 1967 amp, and there's your beautiful little JMP down in the corner. By late 1966 and getting into early 1967, Marshall had stopped using the GZ34 tube rectifier in all models universally, and they'd gone to a solid state rectifier. Now the early JTM 45s, I don't think they actually had a model number assigned to them, but if we dig into Marshall's records, we tend to see a, a reference to a 2245, and that would be your early JTM 45. But as we get into 65 through 67, 68, this is when we see the beginning of all the Marshall model numbers. Now, these can often be confusing because the primary circuit that many of us are so familiar with is the 1959 circuit. That doesn't refer to the amp, that's the model number. It gets a little weird because Marshall has model numbers, numbers like 1987 that have nothing to do with the year 1987. So let's run through those model numbers real quickly and we'll kind of give you an overview of what that is. So we know the JTM45 eventually became the the 50 watt version was called the 1987. You'll also see references to a 2245. Model number 1987 is any Marshall lead circuit that's a non-master volume 50 watt amp. Model number 1986 is any Marshall base circuit 50 watt non-master volume amp. 1959 is any Marshall super lead circuit 100 watt non-master volume. That's one of the magic ones we all chase after, but in truth, these circuits are very similar. 1992 is any Marshall super bass circuit, 100 watts, non-master volume. 1963 is any Marshall super PA circuit, 
50 watt non-master volume. 1968 is any Marshall Super PA circuit 100 watt non-master volume. So the amp that I'm sitting beside right here is a model number or circuit number 1968. It has nothing to do with the year. It's actually the name of the model or the circuit of the amp. 2204 was your master volume models. Now, any Marshall that had a master volume on it, 50 watt, that was a 2204. The 2203 was any master volume model, 100 watt. So now we're into our super PAs, now that we've gone over all these model numbers. Now these amps are a little trippy looking for guys that are really in love with Marshalls, but in truth, what they've given you is a traditional Marshall layout over here with your presence, bass, mid, and treble. Then you've got two sets of your, what I call the bright channel, channel one, and the darker channel rhythm two. You have those times two. Now in truth, these amps are really extraordinarily similar to your super leads, your super basses, the tremolos. As all those super leads began to get bought up with the plexi craze, guys quickly started to realize I mean, a super bass, the same amp. Page, Jimmy Page actually used a bunch of super basses. Guys sort of buying up the tremolos, and for a long time, people stayed away from the PA heads, not realizing that they're essentially the same circuit. It just looks a little bit daunting. So all they've done is given you that basic Marshall circuit, but you've got four volume knobs and a total of eight input selections. You can bridge and jump these together just like any of your super lead, super bass, super trim amps. The Marshall Super PAs ran until 1975 and they, and they were discontinued. So the one we're messing with today is a 67. This will have a plexi panel. Essentially it's a Marshall plexi. It's just not uh, something maybe you guys are used to seeing, but the Super PA amps are really unique, really cool. And with all Marshalls of that era, they're beginning to become more and more sought after. So now that we've talked a little bit about the history of Marshall in the 60s, coming into kind of the early 70s, uh, and gone through all those confusing model numbers. Let's have a little fun, plug in the amp, a few different variations, fire it up, and have a listen. Let me pass your test. No promise, compromise, no more, and nothing left.
Thank <laughs> you.